Hello, we back. Another Saturday, same schedule. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Hopefully, you have some questions. Uh, let me know where you are and where you are listening. Where you are listening from. Um, so we started last week with the episode. I'm moving back to Ghana. I'm moving back to Africa. I think we tackled prepar- uh, planning, you know, preparation in which we talk about a bunch of stuff, right? Things to the fact that we talk a little bit about the financial preparation um, because there are no safety nets. And also the mental and psychological preparation that we need to do. We talk about economic opportunities, uh, considerations before you move. Um, Political stability is a big factor you must look into. Uh, personal and physical safety as well, language, cultural barriers, and other things like healthcare, you know, uh, medical infrastructure, transportations, and um, education too. We we talk about education um, as well. So on this episode, we will discuss the visit, right? So hopefully you're ready to, you know, to move that trip to, to, the, to the country of your choice on the African continent, and you've done some preparation, you've done, um, you figure out what you want to do. So this is more for mostly maybe business opportunity or moving back uh, or moving to the continent. So the second thing you need factor is a visit, right? So, and when you, in the visit, I think the visit is really, really important because relocation is a, it's a big deal. It's really, really a big deal. And that should not be taken lightly. So it's, it's important that you get all the information that you need as possible. And sometimes you can't get everything online, right? Um, some people are trying, but uh, there's there's no substitution for you be on the ground and experiencing this thing. So your visits should include overall assessment. Overall assessment is you know, to, to factor in, okay, uh, the economic opportunities, the political stabilities, um, you know, the language, the cultural barrier, you know, to look at, you know, healthcare, if you're moving with children, or if you have some medical needs, that becomes really, really important. You know, transportation, you know, children, uh, education, you know, standard, um, mental, emotional health, you know, all kinds of stuff. So, the visit is overall assessment of looking at everything to make sure that um, this trip is going to be successful. So when you visit, uh, one thing you must understand too is like um, there's a difference between um, vacation mode, you know, like maybe you go there for two weeks, three weeks, then actually, you know, moving there, you know, that's, that's a whole that's a whole difference, right? Because like I always say, um, people can tolerate anything for a short period, right? So um, you have to understand it too. You know, maybe the two weeks that you visited, you could tolerate some things, but if you have to live there year after year, maybe it might be a problem. So you have to be able to differentiate through that. Usually the vacation most a little more exciting um, um, because it's new, you know, so there's, you know, there's a lot of, could be a lot of good distractions sometimes. And so now before you even make the visit, one thing else I think you need to factor in also is, okay, w- what is the purpose of the trip, right? If, if miss, let's say you want to go look for land, then you have made a contact with uh, reliable people on the ground. And also where you stay, where you stay during your visit is also important because it makes it easier for you to commute and explore whether maybe you want to rent or maybe you want to own land or business opportunities, make it easier for you to go up and down, right? Let's say if you are thinking about staying here, but then you rented some apartment because it was super cheap, like, you know, cross town, it makes it difficult, especially because you don't have a vehicle, it's gonna add up in your cost of transportation of trying to get from place to place. So you are factoring all that in and so then you're also looking at the com- economic uh, opportunities, right? So Because you have to support the lifestyle um, and stuff like that. So, you know, if you want to do farming, you know, 
you know, if you want to get into the restaurant business, you know, if you want to maybe get into, into even real estate, you know, all kinds of stuff, um, you are, you know, exploring that economic opportunities and talking to some people that can help you in terms of making it a reality in Africa because the model you are bringing might not work uh, because of the mentality and, and, and other factors in play. Okay, there's more people watching the IBIS. Please check in so I know who's there. Um, so then another thing during the visit, I think you should be thinking about is the management of expectations. What it is that you are willing to accept for yourself is different for everybody. What is you really that you can't go with that? Because I have people tell me like, I can go without hot water, right? Like I need my hot water. Or some people will say, I can go out go without my AC. Um, and so you have to manage your expectations. What is it that um, you you accept, you tolerate, and think certain things are like no go for you. And so those things that you have to, if you want to increase a little bit of lifestyle, it's going to cost you a little bit more money. So the basic things here is uh, luxury in the, in most African countries. And so you have to you have to factor all that in um, as well. You have to factor that in as well to to manage the expectations. So, okay, um, you know I can I can deal with this. I can't deal with that. Then another thing too you have to look into is the environmental consideration. Right? It's just the environment. Um, environment. To, you know what I mean by environment consideration is uh, the totality. You know of, of not just the physical environment, which will be the how clean uh, things are and stuff like that, but also the environment, the intangible ones will be the mindset. The mindset has perpetuated uh, in terms of everything, in terms of health, in terms of success, in terms of education, in terms of everything, right? Because uh, the environment is going to be really, really important. Uh, most of your happiness is going to be determined by the environment that you find yourself in. Um, so you have to look at all these things um, on your journey. Um, don't just look at it because you got a cheap land for $50, right? Um, and stuff like that. So look at all those things before you decide you're going to jump. Some people will be like, Tony, I'm very spontaneous. I like to do things. Yes, that, that, that is awesome sometimes. But if you have children, maybe the children did not co-sign for this spontaneity, right? So um, you have to factor that in. There's certain things that you can do spontaneously and certain things that you need to really sit down and figure this thing out so you can you can, you can can succeed and thrive and you know, accomplish your goals and dreams. All right? Who's here? Hello. Ghana Dreams for Life. Let me know if you have any questions, okay? So the visit is no substitution. You really, really have to go. It could be you may have to check out African countries to see what fits for you. Ghana doesn't fit for everybody. Gambia doesn't fit for everybody. Kenya doesn't fit for everybody. It is Tanzania, South Africa, and all these countries, right? So you may have to visit. So, uh, so if, the, if, if the country doesn't work, work for you don't make it work right if you don't feel like you feel at home or the things that you want to do is possible here don't force it in give yourself time uh and explore another part of the continent um and then make that make that decision okay so it could be maybe you may have to do the same country you know a couple of times you know because depending on what year you go what 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 time of the year you go, you know, that may change. You know, if you go to a less busy time, maybe you can have the space to do stuff. If you go to a, you know, peak time and, and, and for example, in Ghana and everybody's there, maybe the traffic alone is going gonna, is gonna to drive you insane. So you have to factor all that in before uh, you you start coming back and regrouping and say, okay, I've decided country A is a choice. 
I know how much it costs to start this business A. I know what I'll need. I know what the infrastructure, infrastructure is going to be. I know the capital. I know how much employees I need to pay them. I know how much I need to pay them. I need, I need to offer some training. I need to maybe come up with a code of conduct, ethics, how I'm going to run this business. I know I need to put in checking balances to keep an eye on both the products and also the money aspect. Um, and so who can I hire? Who cannot I hire? What industry? What is the rate of return on this investment? Can I run the business from outside, right? Do I need to be there uh, maybe the first six months to get everything off the ground? What do I need to do with my job then? Do, am I quitting that time? Am I taking sabbatical? Am I taking leave of absence? When I take leave of absence, is my job going to be back? You know, so there's a, there's a bunch of stuff that you have to consider you know, and stuff like that. So what is my safety net? What is my backup plan? Uh, what if I put all this money it doesn't work? Then do I start from scratch or I have some money left so I don't have to begin? Okay. Uh, when do I, I assess to pull out, out of something when that fill is not working? When you invest all this money, it's like you're not getting any return. Uh, should I be throwing money at it all the time or should I just pull out? Right. These are all conversations that are very important that we talk about when you come to consultation, right? That we talk about. So if you have any question, okay, you know where, where to find us. And we can help you sort out some of these questions that you can go and prepare and then and then and then make sure that um most people will move from an inconvenient location to a place of better options or the thought was a better option so it makes sense that when you move you progress instead of regress right we are trying to avoid regression okay and so that also means that you have to factor in a couple of things. Um, you know, maybe you don't have to sell that house here before you go. Maybe you don't have to burn all the bridges before you go. Maybe it's not for, there's not one cookie cutter way for everybody. Everybody's situation is unique and is different. And so you have to know what it is that you want and decide you may not fit for everybody. That's okay. If it works for you, that's all it is. Um, just because it worked for somebody, that means it's going to work for you because, you know, there's a lot of things to to factor and, and consider, right? And so these are important things, you know, the preparation, good sample, because when you prepare well, the chances of success is really, really high. Okay, if you're not prepared, you know, Africa is going to spin you around and spit you back wherever it came from. You know, is it, that is how it is. It's not, it's not what people think it is, right? So prepare, do your assessment, understanding your vacation mode, living there mode, look at the opportunities and all that stuff that you need so you can, you can make income and then manage your expectations and and then, you know, consider a few things and then when you come back, then you can decide the next step, which will be, okay, am I gonna rent? Am I going to buy land? Um, should I build a bungalow? Should I build a story building? Should I put all my money into a dream house? Or should I build a three bedroom first and then someday build my dream house? Um, and all these discussions are important. Should I, you know, I never encourage you taking all your money and go build this um, this dream home and you don't have any money left uh, to actually enjoy it. Um, and so it would have made sense to buy, to build a three, four Mangalo style and have extra cash to actually enjoy the things that you need to enjoy. Kwame, thank you, thank you. Yes, it's been a long time, man. It's been months. I hope all is well. Um, thanks for tuning in. I know there's more people behind the scenes and stuff. So, so this will be the series, you know, 
um, going back and forth about you know moving back, moving back to Ghana, and and how you prepare, you prepare well, so you can go there and win. Um, and so that that is the most important thing. Other than that, you know, there's there's not there's not a reason to to move. So after the visit, then everything or the next stage becomes which next week we're going to dive deep into it becomes all financial it becomes all financial preparation because now you have visited you have decided okay i can see myself living here i can see myself making it here i feel at home here yes there's some few things i've considered that i think i can work around i can overcome this thing stuff but if i put xyz now how do i make all these things happen then you're going to look at a financial aspect. And that, the range is huge of all the things you can do and some things that are not advisable uh, to do and stuff like that. So then you can you can go into deep where do you buy the land in relative to where you want to open the business. Do you live in a city? Do you go outside the city? Um. How far do you want to commute? Um, do you get a big compound and have your business be on the same plot? Um, you know, what kind of business for that kind of specific area? Who's going to patronize? Uh, are you going to make the money that you've invested? How much do you need to maintain your lifestyle uh, and have some contingencies? Um, and also to be able to help people you know, how much you need to maybe if you want to come back once a year or every other year back to the U.S. If your family is a four, take it on Delta is no joke, right? Family of four, it's easily could cost you, depending on when you come in, it could cost you like $8,000, right? So are you going to have that money available and that kind of stuff? So then the financial preparation uh, is the next step. And then that, <laughs> that is what is going to make or break. In Africa, it's money, 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 money. All right. Um, so, and so that will be more in depth next week. Let me know if you, anybody have questions about real estate, what I'm talking about. If it's helping you, let me know. If you have suggestions, you can add in there. If there's anything I missed, uh, put it in there as well. Um, and so I'm going to keep it roughly maybe another another maybe 10 minutes and so i don't want to keep it too long i'm trying to make this series more you know more like uh time limited also trying to give you the best uh, information possible and so this is all it's about right this is all it's about there's no reason to move to africa and you don't make it you know it's i think it's devastated right uh because you burn all your bridges here you go there and it doesn't work out for you. Anybody that enjoys seeing people like that is just sick. There's no benefit to see, you know, your brothers and sisters fail and stuff like that. So you don't have to if you prepare well. You really don't have to, right? So that is when we come in and we can say, watch out for this, plan for this. Uh, maybe, maybe don't just burn everything out. You know, don't deplete maybe all your 401k because there might be a benefit to keeping them here. Don't do that kind of stuff. Um, because what if this things happen and you've depleted all your resources? Even when you come back, you can't go back to your job. You lost all this experience. So you go back to what? Associate. You go back to a new hire, right? And you've lost all the benefits if you deplete all of them. So those kind of things are very, very important. Very, very important. You can make it in Africa. Your dreams can come true. Uh, it can be wild. Um, it can be an adventure. It can be um, everything in between. You know, everything in between, right? But it depends a lot on you and your preparation and then the people that hopefully are guiding you have your best interests at heart, right? Because it's very, very important. 
uh, because you can know everything. Nobody can um, because there's not enough time to master yourself in everything. So hopefully you find some good people in certain areas that I really want to, and if they charge for a service, just, just pay them. If it's good, just pay them and, and get information and, and move on and that kind of stuff. Question here. Um, great question, great question, great question. This is probably one of the questions that keeps coming up, right? Uh, skyrocketing prices that happens out of random. It looks like random, but it's not usually random. We know a certain time of the year when these things happen. If you are paying attention to the world market, you know, materials actually has affected uh, every other country with COVID. And in the US too, the construction industry, materials jump. You know, some place actually like 300, 400% for the cost of uh, anybody that's doing construction or renovation will tell you, right? The self Ghana one is kind of like sometimes uh, it's a little bit painful, right? Because you get a quote, you budget, and like in one week, it's like almost double, right? It's hard for a lot of people to to budget those things. On average, we tell people every quote you get, just budget about 15%, just in case, just in case something happens. Because sometimes work needs to be done, it needs to be done right away. Pre-stressed concrete beams, I've seen that. You see, so the challenge is this. It's all about quality. It's about quality of the production of the product. All pre-stressed concrete beams are not the same. Are not the same. And because we're in a construction area, uh, it's getting elaborate. We've seen a lot of schemes. I mean, it's getting, now it's getting really, really good. Like we see stuff and we are very impressed, right? For every authentic thing you see, that's fake. The fake right now is getting really good. It's getting really good. So there are quality pre-stressed concrete beams and there are some that is not, but on appearance and sometimes even testing, it looks like it's solid. So, Always looking for other options is good. The goal is if you can find somebody who's going to actually proportionate the materials and give you a good product, and then that all you have to worry about is a quality installation. The question also means you also have to factor in the type of building you are building, right? Um, to see whether pre-stressed concrete beams will actually work. Um, you know, maybe you have a lot of open spaces um, so, you know, you know, you have a, a huge layout and, and then maybe you may have to do beams across, hidden beams, increase the sizes of pillars. Uh, we've seen a couple of things that we are not happy about when I went to Ghana. We went to this house and I prayed. That was the first time I prayed, I prayed entering the house. Um, you know, it looks like at any point, the whole thing was going to collapse. And how the person got away with, I don't know. I think that person should be like thrown up in jail for like never, they shouldn't come out because it was like um, attempted murder with the way they built that thing. And the engineer that came to correct it did not, what they did did not solve anything. And we called him, when we got it, we called him and said, listen, we want you to come and we can figure this thing out because what you did is not really, it's actually made it worse. And, you know, after a few pushback, he, he, he told us the truth, that he knew what he did was not going to solve it. But he didn't want to tell the client because it's going to cost a lot of money to remedy that situation. And I, was, I wasn't I was happy about it because we're talking about structure now that people are going to die. This building is going to collapse. I bet money on it that is going to collapse at a certain point. So it has nothing to do with it's going to cause to remedy that. That's life at stake. So eventually we met again and now we're going to go solve that issue and stuff like that. So 
if if the you know if the pre-stressed concrete uh, beams are done white on the same layout, you know, and, and, you know, it will work and install properly. It will get done. The question is like, how are you gonna determine whether it was done right without testing? Okay, because when prices go up, they also making this stuff. You know, you have to you have to make profit, and some of the people do all kinds of stuff, right, to do that. So. So if you if you find a good one and then you get um, a good solid installer, you can make it work. Another great question: Building first or start a business? My view is this. My view is this. There's no right and wrong. It depends what you're looking at. If if you are emphatically you know that for without a doubt you want to move like you had it like you just can't live wherever you are you're going to move i would say a better house first if you are 50 50 go start a business right because the issue is this you know sometimes uh you hear and i think i want to break this thing down for a couple of weeks. you hear i started a business in africa you know you see a lot of in the social media it's not, you don't need a lot of money to start a business in Africa. You can start $100. Some business can start $200, $400. So sometimes I think we are, you know, we are making starting a business thing, um, starting a business thing like, oh my God, it's like, you know, we went to the, we went to the moon. No. Okay. I've had people start business with $300 right it depends what it is that you're about to do so and the thing that i always encourage bidding first is this if you wait it's going to cost more money because the, the reason i say that because we are tracking all the inflation year after year so it's going to cost you way every year it's going to cost you about 20 to 22 percent how much would have cost you the year before so if you wait five years that's a lot of money Right. In the meantime, land prices are going all over the place. Right. So even when you start a business, you're successful, you got to come with a lot of money. What if the business doesn't bring in that revenue, that revenue that you're expecting? Right. Now, your desired area, you can afford because the land has gone like $50,000. Right. So you are pushed outward, but then it's not best for you to commute back and forth because traffic, right? So it depends what it is, where you are and how prepared you are, right? How prepared you are. And not, you know, we shouldn't kid ourselves that you start a business is going to work. Business fail. A lot of businesses fail. A lot of good businesses fail because people sometimes don't, don't want to patronize it, right? So. It's a great question. Can I start a good business? Um, guy with twenty thousand pounds, I believe. Yeah, yeah. You have you have a bunch of options that you can go into. Um, and the question is, you have a couple options. I mean, you can even you know split it ten and ten and do it two options the question is that in our part of the world you probably have to be there some time to get it going you know to to keep an eye on things right to keep an eye on things other than that you can put one million dollars in and the thing is not going to work out you can have all the great business plan but you have to be there and set the tone so the business ethic principles, enforce the rules, code of conduct and everything to get your return back, you know. So that is the challenge. Sometimes you don't have the privilege or option with your job to be able to just leave for this long period of time, right? Because whatever business you start, you at least have to understand your customer base, right? You have to understand your customer base um, and know how to tweak things to be very, very successful. That would take time. 
question is do you, do we have the time now some people have a flexibility they can work remote you might work remote and so not everybody can do that right so you have to be targeted uh and also know it's not just the business the location is a big deal location is very, very important because the wrong business in the wrong location the right business in the wrong location is not going to work so what you want is you want the right business in the right location there's a couple of nice restaurants in ghana but the location nobody knows where they are and they have the good food and all those things but people are not patronizing because they're not in this spot so you have to figure these things out and these are some of the things that will help you when you go on your trip on your trip um to to do your assessment and so okay you know if i if i invest here you know what in this area what do i need what is needed in this area and the mistake some people do when they do business is they do they start a business they love now bad way to look at it you start a business that have the growth potential that can give you the best revenue profit once you gain all that stuff, then you can do the stuff you love. Because sometimes you can go do the stuff you love and it's not making you money. It's not making you money. So you start, if it's, I'm giving you an example, if it's catfish and you can stand catfish, but catfish can give you $50,000 a month, damn it, you're doing catfish. Right? So that is how you got to approach it. Uh, don't make it a business, so don't make it too much emotional attachment. Okay. Are you doing the the wita? <laughs> yeah. So um, you have great insight. I always, I always say, I always say this. For every house you see, that's coding a price, coding a price. Especially when you start going into several hundred thousand dollars. Under the right team, you can build something quality for less. I repeat, when you start seeing these homes for 300, 400, 500 thousand dollars, under the right team, you can build something quality for less, right? Now maybe they can say the location, right? And this question is very, very important. Is this Ghana? You get everything you pay for. Listen, some people will give you a quote that is too good to be true. Some people will give you a quote that you wanna smack them because it's high. The thing I always think about is this thing how do you want the house to be okay do you want to just you know build it anyhow so it's a structure you can live in it or you are building the house as quality so when you hand it over to your kids for many after many many years the house is still in good shape all they have to do is series of small renovation like painting changing the cabinet and maybe they might want to do the floor down the road but they're not actually affecting structure. Your wires should be able to last for the rest of the building, right? So getting the good electrical wiring is good. It should not be replaced. So get the best one, get a great uh, electrician to do the job for you. Should be done in a way that when another electrician comes, they know exactly what is done. So, I've seen a lot of things on YouTube. I don't go to people's comments and do I never do negative comment on people's stuff. I just see it. If it's good, I'll give a shout out. If I see something that I'm like, hmm, I just don't, I just don't say anything and I and I walk away. But it is true. We know how they're cutting the corners. Uh, we know what they are doing to make those price point. When I go to Ghana, I go to all kinds of real estate. I visit all kinds. I don't document this stuff, and I see what you're doing. And I know how they are building, 
how they are making their money, their profit margin. Some are doing good and their prices are uh, good. They need to make profit. They need to make profit. But some of them, nah, I wouldn't pay half the price for the stuff I see. So usually six months, you're going to figure it out. Something's going to happen to the house. Six months. And it doesn't get better from there. And so when you see a building and it's painted and all that stuff, it doesn't mean anything. It's when you start running everything, when you put the stress pressure wrapping all the plumbing system, when all the power lights are on and using it, then you are going to know that this was done well. And, and um, people do cut corners because they have to make the margins. They have to make it work, right? So, so it is what it is, right? You you choose you choose wisely. It will be difficult to regulate it. It's gonna be difficult. I wish they did to some extent. Because if they regulate it, we'll be in business. We still will be in business because my guys, most of them are certified, right? But sometimes the challenge is that you have a lot of people that have learned from our apprenticeship, right? And so maybe down the road, Ghana is going to regulate it, but it's also difficult. I mean, it's like because sometimes the big guys off the street, hey, you want to come and do these things. So I think that um, the builder should be regulated. Uh, the builder should have some responsibilities in terms of ensuring the quality of the work. This is not a popular <laughs> statement from one of the builders. They should have certain responsibility. But most of the time, people don't want to pay these guys. You know, they want to pay them less, and the guys cut corners, and then you and they end up paying. And then you call them when it's something, they don't pick up your call. So it's a house. You know, it's supposed to life, is the house supposed to stay there for many, many decades or even a century or two? So my attitude is find the best people, pay them, make sure they deliver so you can live and have a peace of mind. Other than that, anybody can put a structure, okay? Yeah, I know, I know some too. <laughs> I know some of them. Um, so, it, you know, it, it is what it is. It's like, because they, that, that, is, that is the only way. No, that, that is the only way, right? That is the only way they can... They can make some money back, right? Um, and so, th there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of stuff going on, and, and you know, <sighs> consultation, <laughs> consultation on this thing, okay? So, kind of dreams for life. You know, this is very, very in depth, in depth discussion. Um, you know, stuff right so consultation, please. You can go to our website and book, and then we can look at everything, uh, where you are, your finances, what are you trying to achieve, how risky you want to go. That means you're going to factor your age um, and stuff like that. Okay, consultation. Um, so, so th this is a tricky, Takisha. This is a tricky question. Um, Forty-five will be on the low end. So, sometimes people say um, completed house. For me, what I consider completed house is basically everything is in there, appliances. Furniture is in there. You just bring in your bags, like your clothes, right? Your wardrobe and everything. But sometimes completed means the just the structure, right? Which sometimes, so you got roofing, you got paint, you got floor tiles, and maybe kitchen cabinets are in there or not. I always say um, for a three-bedroom open concept, uh, 1,000 1, square feet, I always say, so I'm, I'm, I'm factoring medium, 
to a little bit quality, I would say probably add about another 20K to it so that you can get good wiring, you can get good structure, um, um, you can get good plumbing, and then you can play with tiles and cabinet and that kind of stuff. So because on that budget alone, good wiring and installation for that square footage, you know, you can see about probably that five thousand dollars. That's just going to go into electrical wiring, labor and materials, right? Because maybe you're going to end up adding a generator, backup generator, right? You're going to end up adding maybe or maybe provisions for solar panel, you know, and that kind of stuff. So that will cause, or maybe you don't want the wires hanging from the pole to the house. So you're going to do ammo cable. Ammo cable is going to cost some money. Uh, it's about 2,000 CDs or something like that. They're going to run underground. So there's a couple of things. So I would say for a three bedroom, that 45 is kind of like about two bedroom ish, you know. So I'll say 20 should be able to cover with managing the stuff um, for structure and, and, and doing everything. Because sometimes to roofing too, we have to factor, you know, is the roofing covering all the, uh, the square footage? Uh, what type of roofing you want, right? Do you want one with a warranty? Uh, every company is different. And so roofing, there's different options um, and stuff like that. So I always say, you know, go for a higher budget and trying to work between that budget down to think it's 45 and then you get to some place and then you be like, I can't afford it, so give me the shittiest roof, right? So I would say at 20 yeah you know uh, there's there's a lot of stuff there's you know it's i i mean i don't i try to be careful what I say because you know there's a point to like I don't want to discourage people from building, but the construction industry there's a lot of stuff going on. There's really there's, there's a there's a lot of stuff that we are coming across, and so you know some people some company have a reputation of just this is how they do things and whatever, and so um, pick wisely. I think we are one of the best when things of ethics and and quality. Yes, we are not the cheapest. We can't not be because the guys, some have 25 years of experience. They are certified, they're engineers. They are multiple engineers on site. You can't pay them $10 a day. It's, it's not going to work. It's not fair to them, right? So, um, let's see. Okay, okay. Yeah, so we can we can talk more about that. And then bring the plan, and then we can look at it, and then we can we can run the numbers, and and see how it is. Um, another factoring location, right? Location. You know, it's funny because um, I have a guy who works behind the scenes somewhere for a company, and they track prices of everywhere. You know, it's like you can buy the same box of nails. If you buy it on East Legon, you pay more for like if you buy it like some in a different part of Accra. Right, and it's all in Accra. So sometimes um, we bring stuff, like when we travel, you know, sometimes, you know, like we go to other regions, we buy our stuff because we know where we're getting it from. So we don't want to go over there and compromise quality because we don't know, you know, what the shop is all about and stuff like that. So those little things can like, you know, you know, add up. So if you depend on where you're building, it helps you. Or sometimes, you know, um, it punishes you a little bit. So, yes, book a consultation, then we can talk, and then we can we can we can we can you know, get it going. Okay. Okay, I hear you. I hear you. We we are fair. We are fair. Um, 
it, it's just that uh, we don't want to, there's a price point that we know is going to affect quality and we don't want to do that. So we will figure where we feel like, okay, these areas are so critical, so the money should be spent here. The other areas we can get by by not giving the super, super quality team, but it doesn't, it's not going to affect overall living standard of the, you know, of the house and that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, let's talk and then we'll see. Yes, yes, good. <laughs> you know, people always ask me, Tony, have you used a lawyer to buy? I said, not yet, not yet. So, yeah, so it's something we can, we can address you know, in, in consultation as well too. Um, you know, building land, uh, buying land is uh, really tricky. It's very important. Uh, I'm still trying to register model land and and stuff like that. So, um, you know, it is about doing your homework. You know, everything can be done just by doing your homework. And if you find the right people, use them. In Africa, it's gonna cost you. The most honest people, the people that are gonna do right, usually come with some little bit of cost because there's all kinds of stuff behind the scene that they have to take care of. And if they tell you, it will break your, you know, what you want to do. So they absorb all these things and say, listen, in this code is to give you a peace of mind. So some of these stuff, we're not even going to bring it about because we want to maintain your excitement and, uh, and your goal of accomplishing something. So we take these bad news. And, and the stress of dealing with stuff like even having land guys showing up and all that mess sometimes, right? We take all that stuff and make sure that you know we deliver, and that and that comes with that comes with a cost, right? Then hopefully you're trying to make a little bit profit too, which is which is okay, okay. So a bree a bree a bree is nice, um, um, and stuff. So we can talk more. Wow, time. All right. Three minutes, and then I'm going to wrap it up. Other than that, thank you, everyone, for, for, for getting time to, to spend with me today. I hope it was helpful. You know, if you have any questions, vis visit us, you know, and then uh, and then you can also email me, and then we can, we can take it. Take it from there. Uh, go win. Go win. Build build your your dream someday someday we'll have like the builders convention right wouldn't that be awesome it's gonna be you get in because you build you're not gonna get in when you rent and that would be a rental convention we are pushing the limit a little bit for for asset acquisition and ownership and ownership so that when we leave this earth our kids get something they don't have to start from zero like we did they have something so they can take that family's name and make it a uh, you know, legacy. So we're going to push ourselves a little bit because I believe all of you guys can do it. Okay, living in your house is so dope. It's so awesome when you come home. So awesome. You know, it's, it's, it's one of the best things you can do. You can come in anytime you want, leave anytime you want. Uh, you don't even have to tell people you are coming home and that kind of stuff. It's awesome. You don't have landlord issue. Um, you at least build one, and if you don't like it, give it away. Okay, but I think you keep it. If you leave to Kisha, uh, just let me know, um, and then we'll talk. Are you Tinder? Thank you, bro. Um, Gun dreams for life. That question was consultation. Um, IB, thank you. Let me make sure I didn't miss any requirement. Glad to see you back. Um, so anyway, I appreciate everyone that you taking the time. Uh, hopefully I got through all the questions. If I didn't, you can send me an email and then we'll just take a crack out of it, right? Go win in Africa, go with me and live your best life. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye.